It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to this virtual Hispanic Heritage Month event. Uh, Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Month is, is September 15th to October 15th. Uh, during this time and all year round, we recognize that Hispanic heritage is American heritage. And we celebrate the diverse cultures and incredible contributions of the Hispanic American uh, community here, uh, including in the Department of Labor and the labor movement uh, here in, in the United States. Our goal is to empower all workers morning, noon, and night at the department. Uh, that means we must give uh, focused attention to Hispanic workers. Today, there are 29 million Hispanic workers in America. That's 18% of the labor force. Hispanic workers are projected to account for 78% of new workers over the next 10 years. That means our economy depends on them, our communities depend on them, and we have seen more clearly during the pandemic our lives depend on them. Latino workers are overrepresented in the front lines in essential work like farming, food and hospitality, transportation and care work. We owe them not just our debt of gratitude, but our action and support. Uh, we are committed to upholding their rights. No matter your job or your immigration status, you are entitled to labor protections and freedoms from discrimination. We are increasing our efforts to reach workers who may not know their rights or may not, may not know what to do if they are mistreated. And I wanna highlight the outreach that we are doing in the Hispanic community, especially on protecting workers, wages and worker safety. Our wage and hour division is focusing on recovering wages owed to workers. Wage and hour enforces laws on minimum wage, overtime pay, child labor and family medical leave. Those laws cover 148 million workers and 10 million workers workplace across our country including Guam and Puerto Rico. They also include workers in the H-2A and H-2B visa programs. The fiscal year, we have already recovered 5.7 million from workers in those programs alone. We have also a new program called Essential Worker Essential Protection. It's a way of, of focusing our outreach on the most vulnerable workers in, during this, in the pandemic and during the pandemic. OSHA is the Occupational Health and Safety Administration. Its mission is to ensure safe, and healthy working conditions for all workers. Hispanic workers are disproportionately harmed by injuries, illness, or even fatalities on the job site. Again, the pandemic has highlighted the disparities that Hispanic worker, workers face every day. They were the hardest hit during COVID-19 in the meat and poultry processing industry, making up 50%, 56%, excuse me, of reported cases in 21 states. OSHA is committed to helping workers understand their rights. And we are committed to ensuring employers and workers recognize the dangers in their workplaces and prevent injuries and illnesses. If you believe your wages have been shortchanged or your workplace is not safe, you can talk to us confidentially in the language of your choice. We have hundreds of employees who speak Spanish. We have information on workers' rights and training resources in Spanish and other languages. We also host meetings with Hispanic and Latino communities to better understand how we can improve outreach to workers. We also have partnerships with the consulates, legal aid clinics, worker centers, and, and other organizations across this country. If you have a concern, you can go to one of those trusted organizations and they can refer you to us. Recently, we signed a special agreement with the Mexican embassy to make sure that we are working together and reaching Latino workers. Hispanic workers are driving the growth of the labor force in our country. So we need to make sure all of our systems support them with, with equity. We need to make sure employers are doing what they su they're supposed to be doing. We need to make sure that every worker knows their rights and can speak up without fear of retaliation. We pledge to continue our outreach effort so every worker can, should, can go home safely and should go home safely at the end of the workday, healthy and fairly paid. Now I have the great honor of introducing the, the rest of the national staff on this call. Uh, Kristen Garcia, uh, of Wage and Hour is going to talk uh, a little bit about the work that Wage and Hour does. Anthony Rosa of OSHA and Valeria Treves, our Office of Public Engagement. And I'm grateful to all of our regional DOL staff on this call for the work you do. And I just want to give a special shout out to the team here at Department of Labor. Uh, they have done this work for a long time and have done some amazing things. So I want to thank all the DOL team from all over the country. Uh, give a shout out to my area, Boston and New England a little bit right there. But other than that, I love you all the same. So thank you very much for your work. Um, I want to thank all the workers, advocates and organi organizations that are on the call today. 
and that are going to be watching this webinar later on. Thank you for the work you do. And now it's my honor to pass off to Valeria, who will now moderate today's discussion. Muchísimas gracias, Secretario Walsh. Buenas tardes a todo el público que está mirando este evento el día de hoy. Como dijo Secretary el... Walsh, as Secretary Walsh said, part of the mission of the DOL well, um, is um, part of the mission of the DOL well, is to empower all workers. So today we are working the um, occasion of the Hispanic heritage month to empower the Latino community. So we are, we want to emphasize how important it is to collaborate with the community organization so that we can fulfill our mission. So that's why we have invited today many people from many regions in the country who will share with us how and the why of the work the do in the regions together with the regional staff and the regional OSHA offices and the WHD offices of the DOL. So first we'll start, we will start, we will be talking to Jeff Erskine, OSHA Acting Regional Administrator in Boston, welcome. We'll be talking to Alberto Fierro Garza, Mexican Consulate, Consul General of Mexico in Boston. Welcome, Mac uh, welcome, Alberto. Ronnie Jabor from the Brazilian Worker Center. He's an authorized OSHA safety instructor. Welcome, Ronnie. Then we will have McAllen District Office staff. Gary Carrizales is a corpse at the WHD McAllen District Office. Welcome. Then we'll have Daniela Dwyer. He's, she's a managing attorney for the Farm Workers Program from the Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid. Welcome, Daniela. And finally, we'll have the um, people from the uh, New Orleans, William Sabic, PLC, WHD Southwest Regional Office, and Dr. Luz Molina, Director of the Workplace Justice Project, also New Orleans, Louisiana. Welcome. We are incredibly thankful to all of you for being here today and, your, and also the interpreters. So once we will be, we have heard all these uh, regional stuff, we will, I will hand it to Anthony Rosa here from the National Office. So we will start out in Boston. We'll have the uh, Council General, uh, Mr. Alberto Fierro. Can you please talk about the partnership or the agreement that you have signed with the OSHA and the W? It's the um, offices, not just in that region, but throughout the country and why that is important. Thank you, uh, Valeria. My name is Alberto Fierro. I am the uh, Council General of Mexico. And yes, last Friday we signed with uh, OSHA in New England, the renewal of our agreement, our collaboration agreement. We have 50 consulates in Mexico plus an embassy. We all have signed agreements with, with uh, both with OSHA and with uh, the WHD. Those are partnerships agreements precisely because we want to outreach the workers and to, um, we want to let them know their rights regardless of their status. They all have the right to um, work safely, um, to have um, their occupational safe and healthily respected and to have a fair um, salary and to have their, not to have lost wages or salaries. And especially during the pandemics, we have enabled webinars 
and conversations online about risks at work. However, um, or for example, for instance, in the construction and building industries, both for the employers and the employees. That's why the support we receive from the DOL is critical, and especially from these two agencies, the OSHA and the WHD. They are um, our allies for us and for all the Mexican workers working in the US. Thank you. Now we have Ronnie Jabor. Ronnie, can you please talk about your work? Can you please introduce yourself again and the work you do with the Brazilian Workers Center and especially the work you do together with the OSHA office in your region? Yes, thank you. And thank you for inviting me to this uh, great webinar. My name is uh, Ronnie Jabor. I've been working eight years at the construction industry, and today I'm an authorized OSHA safety instructor for the construction workers in New England. And we have an alliance, an OSHA alliance, whereby we can work together um, we do trainings for workers so that they can know how to work safely so that they can go home every day safely and we also want their rights to be respected thank you thank you Roni. now jeff uh, person from the OSHA regional office. Um, could you please talk about why it is so important and why signing agreements with the uh, Mexican consulate is so important and also with the Brazilian Workers Center, please? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Valeria. And thank you, Secretary Walsh. Good to see everybody. Uh, honored to be here. My name is Jeff Erskine. Uh, I give you a little background. I've been uh, with OSHA a little over two decades. And before that, I spent a decade working construction in the Boston area. Um, I've always been cemented in a strong belief that nobody should ever have to work in an environment uh, that subjects them to injury, illness, or worse death. There will always be dangerous jobs, but there's also always a way to make them safe. We sign agreements and work uh, with the consulates and people like Mr. Jabour, um, so we can help one another. So. You know, I, I have actually a, a three-pronged approach that I'd like to touch on, um, and I used actually an acronym because OSHA is full of acronyms, and it's called EAT. So the first one is educate. Uh, we we want to provide knowledge to each other, identify a common interest and challenges, and how to file, make people understand how how to file a complaint, and make them comfortable to be able to file those complaints, and when to speak up. The second one is access. We want everyone to have access to OSHA, whether you're uh, reaching us online by phone or by walking in. Most field offices in OSHA are in private private buildings, not government buildings. And it, that's designed, that's by design so that people can access them without feeling intimidated. Um, filing a complaint for yourself or someone else should never ever seem so difficult that people wanna shy away from it. OSHA is here for you. The last prong is trust. This is really the cornerstone of it all for us. Um, without this, all is for naught. We want to build trust. And how we do that is by listening and engaging with communities in a safe space for them. We have OSHA Listens event and by keeping complaints anonymous and letting all workers know that we are, we're concerned about your safety and health, not your immigration status, nothing else but your safety and health. Um, we want to identify who we are when we're on the site and by following through and keeping in touch along the way. Uh, building relationships that last through work advocate groups like Ronnie Javor, the consulate, unions, cost groups, and faith-based organizations. Um, you know, and by OSHA staying true to its mission by protecting every American worker. To sum it all up, since its inception, OSHA has stood for workers and that will never change. It will continue to learn and evolve as an agency. It can only get better by paying attention to what's really happening in work or workplaces. And we achieve that when you feel comfortable let us, letting us know. Thank you. Gracias, Jeff. 
Eh, Ronnie, volvamos contigo un poco como entrenador de OSHA. So, Ronnie, we will, we're, we're going back to, to you. Why did you decide to collaborate with OSHA and why it is so important to outreach, to extend our outreach to the Latino community. Yes, this is important because we come from a country where the uh, safety culture is not so, um, is not so stable. So it is important when we come to the United States to understand how to work safely and so that we can understand how to respect how to observe the safety measures that are used in the US, because the rules here are different and the way you work are different too. For example, in Brazil, we work with bricks and here we work here in the US, we work with timber. So this also makes a difference. This creates different risks. And for example, we do training, safety trainings, and we need to understand that OSHA is not like the police are not, they're not the immigration uh, offic officers. And because many people feared that OSHA would arrest them because they were in an irregular status. And we had to tell them, no, OSHA doesn't care about your immigration status. They just care about your safety. And this is what OSHA wants for you. They want you to work safely. And this was important to them. But we had to insist, we had to, in this, to insist and tell them, okay, look, OSHA doesn't care about your nationality or your immigration status. They just want to understand if you work safely. And this was really something really, really difficult for them to understand. OSHA is not the immigration. Uh, department. They have nothing to do with them. We also had to explain them about their rights, especially about the wages, because many workers did not understand their rights. And this is something we explained to them. We explained to them, this is the minimum wage you're going to get. This is, these are your rights. They didn't know anything about that information. They didn't know anything about it. And now they have training um, brochures in Spanish, in Brazilian, or well, in Portuguese, in English. And this was really helpful because now people feel entitled and they know how to look for the information they need when they need it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was excellent. So now we're going to the McAllen region in Texas. Daniela, we will start with you. So can you please introduce yourself again and talk about the project with the farmers, with the farm, um, with farming workers and why you collaborate with the WHO in that area? Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you. And uh, thank you for inviting me here today. My name is Daniela Dwyer. I am a attorney. I'm in charge of this project with, uh, for farming uh, workers in the Rio Grande uh, region in Texas. And well, this is, um, this is a legal aid office with many attorneys, but we advocate the farmers and the farming workers in seven states, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, etc. Ah, yeah, you asked me why why we, we decided to work with the DOL. Yes, I really forgot. Well, it's difficult for me to explain why, but at the same time, well, we work with the different districts in the DOL, and we've been working in several states for many years already. Why? Because we serve our community. We want to better serve our workers, and that's why we, we, we work with them. I'm an attorney, so I help my clients in the court districts, but 
I need the help of several other attorneys involved in other districts, in other circuits. For example, in the migration camps or when looking at uh, conditions, um, several working conditions that do not abide by the law. So we need the help of many other experts. And with the help of my colleagues, we can go to the employer and tell them, well, this is not according to the law. This is not legal. You need to change this. And with the help of the government representatives, we can investigate many more things because they are allowed to do to delve into many more things than I am. So this is really helpful. This is a very good agreement that we have signed, and this is very good collaboration and partnership because it means that every person is entitled to have the rights respected. Thank you, Daniela. That was good to hear. That was good to know that the collaboration was good and it, it works. Corrando Carrizales now from the WHI, the WHD. Can you please talk about why you collaborate with uh, community groups, for example, in this case, in Catrana? Yes, thank you. Thank you again. Well, my name is Carrando Carrizales. Um, I work at the uh, WHD and I've been here for 24 years. I've worked here for 24 years for this agency. I am was an investigator, so I, my work was going to the companies and check whether the companies, the employers were uh, respecting the law and they were paying fair wages and well, the minimum wage, uh, 7.25 per worked hour and many other things. Uh, many requirements, for example, that the employers, the companies um, have um, um, good record keeping, uh, payment records, maintenance records, etc. This is what I used to do, but now I do many of the trainings that we offer. Uh, we go to the companies and provide them with training so that they can comply with the federal laws. And uh, I used to do training for groups of employees so that they can understand what the minimum wage is and if they are entitled to, um, to claim lost salaries or lost wages. We have worked with many agencies here in at this valley. One of uh, them is Rala. Well, and Daniela Dwyer is the representative of Trala here at the Valley, and we've been working with them for many years. They do an excellent work. They do an excellent work, a magnificent work. They are like an extension of the WHD because they refer many employees, many workers to us. You refer to as many cases of uh, workers that are not getting the minimum wage, or workers that are not being paid overtime, or workers that are not being paid uh, the minimum wage. For example, waiters, yes. Waiters do not get the minimum wage in many occasions. They just work for tips. And for example, people working um, as um, help or at the fields, for example, um, the farming workers that, for example, lack access to water or sanitation toilets. So that's the type of uh, information, the type of cases that we get referred from them and we can send an investigator uh, a zap immediately and check for the conditions and for example see if they are really um, not entitled to get water or sanitation or toilets we um, we did that we did that and 
we are very grateful to Trala and other organizations because they are really doing a good job. Daniela, uh, back to you for a few minutes. What are the next steps for the collaboration? Remember that a couple of years ago, we found uh, our work with uh, legal help, a group of workers, hired workers with an H2 visa working in other melon uh, harvesting here in McAllen, in the area of McAllen. And they, they didn't have bathrooms available. So as they were working, nor were they had, did they have water, even though it was in June and it was more than 100 degrees outside. And so it was uh, those workers, nonetheless, they had the right uh, under contract for their participation in a H2A a visa program. They did not receive this, uh, as Mr. Corey said, nor need not even the minimum wage. They were earning like four or five dollars per hour. And even worse than that, the contractor in his group, he was getting, he was keeping their passports. He was uh, retaining their passports, so it's just completely illegal. That is a part of a human trafficking sort. So when our workers ask permission to share that information with the Department of Labor, including the bad conditions, the bad living conditions in a motel with ten, too many people and only one room, and the workers, uh, many of them were sleeping on the floor and uh, so they gave us permission to share that information with the Department of Labor. From one day to the next, the Department of Labor went to talk to the bosses to fix the situation without mentioning the names of the workers who gave us the permission. And they also imposed a lot of fines against this company because not only is it important to a to protect the rights for the work of the workers and to demand the rights that to put on notice those bosses that when they are non-compliant they're going to have to pay more than what they should have paid to start with because that is what is going to change the attitudes and the uh, compliance of bosses so this is the only example of many references that we've done to the, the department of labor and they did it confidentially. A very good job done. It solved the problem in less than 24 hours and continuing forward, the workers did not have to continue to suffer. And they also finished the season, but with the money that they deserved with better conditions, living conditions. And so I wanted to know, I wanted to workers in the future and us, we will continue working with the Department of Labor and they also need to talk more directly to the Department of Labor. I don't know if we can set up a monthly chat. We had a project called uh, Coffee with h and or uh, Coffee and Chat. And we could have something like that for a community outside of the office, outside of questions of where are you going, but there in the community where the workers are and so that they can talk more comfortably about the conditions that are affecting them. Thank you, Daniela. Very good story to emphasize the collaboration, very important collaboration, where you brought a very important case to the division of hours and salaries and a rapid uh, response to maintain the confidence of the workers and to bring this case forward. Thank you for emphasizing that story. Let's go to the area of New Orleans. We are going to talk first with Luz Molina, the professor. Mrs. Luz, can you tell us about you, your organization, and why do you have a collaboration and alliance with the division of uh, hours and salaries in New Orleans? 
Thank you, Valeria. Good afternoon. The project of uh, labor justice in the Loyola Law School started the relationship with the Federal Labor Department in 2005 as a consequence of Katrina. The director of the district at that time, Barbara Tix, contacted us with the idea, with the hope that we could help to contact the workers who were getting their salaries stolen, their wages, and a lot of violations of OSHA. And our collaboration has continued from then till now. It has been a very special, very good collaboration, truly. The Labor Department, the Federal Labor Department has been very important to this project in several aspects, in several uh, different aspects. For example, it has facilitated educational programs, labor uh, education uh, for the workers that we represent every day and the students that do the work. I am a law teacher, but also I practice law. I believe that this is going to have an effect, a long-term effect. They're young lawyers that can do many big changes and offering that representation. And are, they are informed about the rights through the department, the labor department also. And the department has had, has been extraordinarily flexible permitting that the complaints of the workers can be initiated in community areas and not necessarily in the offices. This reduced the fear of the workers that they may have had to make a complaint, which is very important for the reasons that we've already stated during this uh, seminar. Also, we have also collaborated and giving their services and investigative services, which also, and those are uh, occasions when we see companies that are abusing workers or violating law, they can give the service at a higher level with more authority and with better effect, you know? And I would say finally, that if they cannot help us, we litigate the complaints, worker complaints, and we're an extension of the department, as Mr. Carvizales has said, this is a support, a great support for them, and also offers the employees, uh, the, um, uh, the employers uh, of the workers some uh, impulse and makes the bosses responsible. So access for uh, courts for the workers is very important because without some way of having access to facilitate this, the workers have the fear of going by themselves or they don't have the financial resources to do so. And we are a bridge in that manner. Thank you, uh, uh, Mrs. Molina, William Sapi. It seems that the collaboration with the uh, worker justice program has been for many years from the hurricane, Katrina hurricane. From your perspective, why is this so valuable? And why do these collaborations, why are these collaborations so important to your office and your division? Thank you very much for this, uh, for this topic that is very important today. Like the officer said, like Mrs. Molina said, our collaboration with the project, the Justice Workplace Justice uh, uh, Project has helped us to get closer to the community. We can go to the centers to share information and take complaints. We, it has also allowed us to uh, amplify our message because the members of the project uh, know what laws we are making them comply and they can share information when we're not there. And also the collaboration is that wages and uh, hours have been able to do correction actions for the work. If the workers have not received their wages, as they should, or they have back wages for affected workers. Something that affects the Latino community is the classification and OEA. 
It is also known as working as an independent contractor or also working under contract. Many times we see that workers think that they're working as contractors, but in reality are employees and they should receive the salaries as the law indicates. The project made a workshop about classification that our, our agency and other agencies, federal agencies and state, and state agencies and unions uh, could go to. During this event, we could share a lot of information. We managed to share a lot of information on this. And this was a great deal of help for the workers because we cleared up which are the rights of the employees, of the workers and obligations of the contractors and the employers. Thank you very much for that explanation, William. Uh, Professor Molina, would you like to add something, a specific case that has been a success or what are the next steps for this collaboration? Yeah, thank you. I would say that I would like to focus on how successful this uh, link has been with the uh, Labor Department specifically, it has helped us to collaborate in developing labor questions of immediate importance for us and for the department because they are important for the worker. So we don't have a bigger uh, position than the workers. Uh, the workers are the focus of our, our job of our work. So the incorrect classification as Mr. Savick has stated is very important for us. It's very important for them to collaborate with us that the department collaborates with us because when the worker, uh, when they are erroneously classified, which happens every day, this uh, steals the uh, taxes for the state, for the federal government and the worker. And uh, they also have to do uh, pay additional uh, taxes because they are considered as if we, they were self-employed. This is going to cause a lot of problems in the future and it is causing problems right now. So, the success of having a project together is very important. The second part that is very important for uh, great importance is also that we have managed to have uh, meetings, interdependental meetings with other federal agencies, which impacts because we can talk about everything that impacts workers at the level at the federal level in several areas of work. We can talk about the current situations of the worker and the agents can begin to seek solutions for the communities, worker communities who are most affected by these violations. I believe that this wide lens of the, of, on worker problems is very important because if an employee violates the rights in one area, I am sure that they are violating them in other areas. So the department has been very important in clarifying which are the current trends in the area and worker area for all of the workers. And we want to be at that point where we can participate in finding solutions. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Molina, very well said. I think that we're seeing when we're analyzing these three examples that the collaborations are not only important for specific cases, but also to have a wide vision of the needs of the community and together be able to advance our policies and the way that we do our work in the department and the work, uh, the labor department to protect the community better. Thank you. We are getting to the close to the end of this event today. I want to give the opportunity to the national office, uh, Christian Garcia. She's going to talk about a little bit about the resources available for the community, immigration, immigrant community and the Latino community and how to get in contact with the wage and salary division. 
uh, our, sorry, Christine Garcia. I am the chief of personnel of the division of wage and time, wage and hours. Thank you, Secretary Walsh, for coming to today and his leadership and our personnel and our partners in the division in New Orleans and McAllen for sharing all of the work that they are doing to the, uh, return the salary for the workers. The stories that they have shared today are just a small vision of what the division is doing across the country to ensure that workers, the Latino workers, have the protection in the workplace that they deserve. Workers, Latino workers, are a considerable portion of the essential worker pool. Like the secretary said, you are doing the work of putting food on our tables and uh, maintaining our families safe and healthy and to teach our children. You are the pillar of many of the aspects of our economy. We want you to know that when you have a problem, you have a place to go to communicate with us with questions or to make a complaint, you can call it at 1-866-6487-9243. You will be directed to the Office of uh, uh, Wage and Hours, uh, Time and Hours to receive help. There are offices across the country with professionals that are trained to help you. If a worker believes that their rights have been violated in the workplace, they can make a complaint uh, before our division. These complaints are confidential. We do not share the names of the people who have complained with the employers. We don't even confirm that there was a complaint. We make them comply with the law independently of their migration status, immigration status. And finally, but very important, the employers cannot take, a, they cannot discriminate or retaliate against people who make complaints or participate in an investigation. Thank you very much to our personnel and our associates for their help in protecting the rights of the workers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kristen. And now we're going to go to Anthony Rosa, who is also a worker in the national uh, office in the OSHA division. Anthony, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having this very important hour to present and to talk about the your rights as workers. I'm Anthony Rosa. I've been working here for more than 30 years for you here in the Labor Department in the office. Now I'm the interim director of the connection to the complainant division in the Department of Labor in, in the OSHA and OSHA. I want to thank very much everybody who has participated today in the panelists for the work that you have done with you and your representatives in the workplace throughout the country and in our region, specifically here in the region one with the work that we're doing with the Mexican embassies and other countries. I worked a little bit of time in Florida with the embassies and I know that there is a lot of work to be done and it's important to know and protect the employers as they deserve, employees as they deserve, I'm sorry. Like the secretary said, OSHA, ensures that employees work in healthy and safe locations and that the employers comply with their obligations to protect the rights of all workers to not hurt themselves or to uh, get ill or die at work. As a worker in the United States, you have the right to report complaints or uh, problems with your workplaces and you can uh, report for illnesses or lesions uh, to OSHA without retaliation or uh, this, uh, fired or had any other reprisal. So if you work in the United States, you have the right to go back to your home safe and healthy at the end of each turn. Be clear, this is not an option. Every worker has that right. It does not matter what your immigration status is. That is not a question that we ask when we ask when we do an investigation. 
to get more information about your uh, rights of having a secure and healthy workplace, go to our webpage, www.osha.gov. To get more information about your rights as a complainant, to uh, have a pro to report problems without reprisals, go to our other page, www.whistleblowers.gov. You also can call us 24 hours a day at 1-800-321-OSHA. It's 1-800-321-6742. You can call to ask about your rights. You can call to establish a complaint or just call to get more information. Additionally, and very important, you can communicate with us in any language, in any format, at any time. Our uh, websites mentioned before have links to uh, uh, online complaints. You have one for health and safety issues and one as a complainant. If you don't speak English, there's no problem. We will have an interpreter at, uh, available for you. Since we are celebrating Hispanic Month, next month on October 13th, we're going to have a meeting in the protection programs for complainants for those interested parties that is focusing specifically on you, the workers, Latino workers, and Hispanics, and immigrant workers. That meeting will be on October 13th at two o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. And you can find more information on how to register on our webpage. And once more, and finally, I want you to know that if you work in the United States, you have the right to work in a healthy and safe workplace. You deserve to be protected. We are here to ensure that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian Garcia from, and uh, Anthony Rosa from OSHA, and for those people who are seeing us or participating. When this is published in YouTube, the links that they have mentioned are going to be on the video. So you can find those links if you couldn't write them down, and you can also make a phone call and that information is going to be provided in the uh, recording. We've had a very uh, successful, very valuable uh, talk. We've seen very important cases in different regions and how the community organizations and the uh, regional offices are collaborating to be able to protect the immigrant community and empower the uh, Latino and immigrant communities. I wanted to close this session opening for each one of you who are panelists today to make a closing statement and a message to the Latino immigrant community or any other message that you want to say. We're going to start with the Boston, the Northeast of the country, Boston, the offices in Boston, and Jeffrey X. Oh, sure, thank you, Valeria. Okay. Uh, yeah. oh, uh, one message that, the message is that you have rights and that OSHA is here to protect you and your rights. You should never have to choose between safety or your job. Uh, and we want to earn your trust. So, you know, we want to empower everyone to feel comfortable contacting us and everyone be, be comfortable speaking up for their rights. We are here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Let's go to Alberto Fierragasa, the council. Thank you very much, Valeria. Thank you all for your great presentations and all of you who are participating, all the Hispanic people who are viewing this program, remember all the workers, no matter what their immigration status is, have rights. You have rights at work and it is important for you to know this go to the Mexican consulates or the other organizations, social organizations that very gladly will support you to be able to contact the labor department, be it in the area of OSHA, uh, safety and uh, health and the uh, and, uh, workplace or uh, uh, area of hours and wages. 
don't uh, hesitate and uh, uh, communicate with us because you have rights and you have to fight for them. Thank you. Very well said. Running Schubert from the Center for Workers, Brazil. Thank you for the Brazilian Workers Center participating with you. We in Brazil, uh, the Brazilian Workers Center, it, it covers uh, the Brazilians and Hispanics in Austin, Massachusetts. We've been allied with OSHA for 15 years and our name and our director, Renita Ridson, we want to tell you, we want to tell the workers that you have rights. As an immigrant, you have rights to just wages and a healthy and safe uh, workplace. Uh, we in Brazilian Workers Center are here to help you to guarantee your rights and to work safely. You have a family at home waiting for you. Thank you. May God bless you. Thank you, Ronnie. We're going to McAllen, Texas, to Mr. Coriando Carrizales from the Wage and Hour Division. Thank you. I don't know what to say more that hasn't been said before. Everybody's mentioning your rights, the rights as workers, and that is the workers' rights. It's very, it's very important for all of us here, for us in Wage and Hour, we have our job is to ensure that workers are getting paid what is required and the minimum wage which is a collective it's over time and that they have the rights uh, as laborers certain protections for health and that is what we do and these services are services that are free they don't cost anybody a penny so there should be no fear of communicating with us or contacting us the laws are a goal for two years in other words if there was a violation of the law a year ago you have protection you can talk to us and you uh, get the investigator to talk to you and to make the decision if you have protection or not, but uh, wage and hour federal laws protect workers for two years. And that is why uh, we can help people in many, many situations. We don't have, and we don't charge the worker anything. And there is, we don't mention the person who is complaining or that contacts us. So there should be absolutely no fear by anybody to contact us that perhaps they're going to mention my name or is going to affect my status, that I'm fixing my papers or whatever. The information that Wage and Hours receive stays with us and we are here to help the worker, to serve the worker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corey, uh, Dana Dwyer, Director of the Farm Workers Project. Hello. I wanted to say the same as everybody said, that it is very important to repeat that even those people who do not have documents, they have rights in the workplace. Our community, Hispanic community, is known for being hard workers, but that should not be the, at the cost of self-respect or for your co-workers, and it should not result in uh, injuries while you're working so hard or results in loss of life. So it is very important to inform yourself about the rights that you have, as well as what Caris Mr. Carrizales said, that uh, the, those rights last for a very long time. And they also should talk to legal defenders like here in Texas, legal aid and the more department. And you can also learn more about your rights is looking at the very detailed materials that they have on their web page and internet and the labor department. And you can also see those materials in Spanish, those documents in Spanish. Many people have lost a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, and a lot of tears for having those rights. They have given that much. It wasn't easy. But those rights are not going to last if they're not used every day and we don't learn what they are and try to forward them collectively or individually. So as a combination or with your partners or your co-workers, 
that are uh, working, uh, that I uh, want to talk to the Labor Department, your co-workers, we can continue to improve the conditions of the workers and the conditions for the community. That is how we can continue advancing these rights, not only individually, but also as a community to advance, to improve the lot of our families. And like it was said by Mr. Cesar Chavez, yeah, that's how it is, that's how we can do it. Thank you, uh, Ms. Daniela. One minute each one, Mr. William Sabbat, yeah, planning coordinator for the division of which and which an hour and the Southwest Regional Office. Thank you. I think that all of the rest of the colleagues have met. The only thing that I want to share with you is uh, something that I hope that is uh, that is a hope. Uh, when I finished my career, I went to an event when there was a representative of uh, hours and wages that uh, giving information about workers' rights during this event. And one of the questions that I had in mind as was I uh, was listening to these officers was is that I don't know that these laws exist even though I work in this country. And now I understand a part of my job, the importance of our alliance with the uh, community organizations, defender organizations. These opportunities will help us to establish the confidence of the workers, they be create the um, environment where we can work mutually to comply with the challenge of all the, that all the workers have in common, which is to give the power to the worker with knowledge and the employer also inform them about their obligations because at the end, I think that the laws exist for some reason, and it is broader in this country. It is administrated by the agency, and it is the law of equal rights for workers. We all have rights, as mentioned before, and, the, and you have to claim them. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Professor Luz Molina from the uh, Labor Rights Project in New Orleans. Well, I'll be brief, but I can say something. I can add something to everything that has been said so fervently and so excellently. I just have one more message. We appreciate you as workers, your situations, your status, uh, your lives are of concern to us. You need to know your rights, you need to understand your rights, and you need to speak up with no fear of retaliation because there are resources available for you. Please trust us, please trust the resources. And you ever, if you ever come to New Orleans, please um, pay me a visit. Um, Bye. That's it. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the panelists for your presence, for your attendance, for your interest in supporting the Latina communities and for the great work you do every day in all your regions and especially to all the attendees, to all the audience and we'll be happy to keep talking to you. Thank you. And